right? Yeah. The viral blizzard. Yeah, I know. Hey, I'm below sea level right now, so I got to get going. Bye. Of course, I wasn't really talking on my phone, but we are below sea level today for a camping adventure, a toxic one, around the Salton Sea. And the first stop is the town of Calipatria, or Patria, not exactly sure, uh, where they have the world's tallest flagpole. And the idea is that uh, this really high pole is going to hold the flag above sea level at all times. Now, unfortunately, at Christmas time, as it turns out, it's not really a flagpole anymore. And if you look to the very top of this very tall structure, uh, you will not see a flag. You will see some lights uh, coming down, which apparently is a Christmas decoration. In any case, you can read all about uh, this world's tallest flagpole if you care to, uh, but the next stop is going to be some volcanic mud pots. Mud pots. We're going to talk a lot about mud and dirt in this adventure. The mud pots are down there, and if you notice a look of concern on my face, uh, it would be because I managed to get the taco into a pretty uh, tough spot here. Uh, I was just coming down and, and it was sliding, even in four-wheel drive, sliding more and more and more off towards this very steep ditch. And the, the tires were so covered with mud that there was just nothing going on. It was just sliding, sliding. You can even see when I tried to back up a little bit how here's where I was and then sliding more off to the side, right? Came in here and then backing up, just sliding, sliding, sliding. So uh, luckily I did have this little shovel and I've done a little bit of work because, uh, well, it's, it's Christmas Day <laughs> and... Uh, we're probably not going to get a, a tow truck to come out. Uh, I did get a hold of one guy and he quoted me a starting, a starting price of $650. This mud in this spot, just in this spot, is just amazing. I'll show you my, my shoes here. They're so heavy, it's hard for me to even lift it up to show you. But... Uh, It could be worse, could be worse. Uh, I do have a little bit of food. Some coconut almond biscotti. I'll tell you a little more later about how I finally got out, got unstuck, and uh, it's probably a story that you want to stick around for. It's nothing dramatic, but it is encouraging, heartwarming, you might say. So right now we are on the hunt for what is called the Nyland Mud Geyser. Now, the story of the geyser is that at one point there was this big mud spring that popped up on the other side of those railroad tracks and it started moving and mud geysers are not supposed to move. I see something down here. Mud geysers are not supposed to move. This one started moving uh, at a rate of something like at sometimes 20 feet a year. And so it moved underneath those railroad tracks. This geyser has now gotten so close to the highway that they've had to actually shift the highway over to the west uh, because at some point this geyser is apparently going to start actually devouring the old highway. And there you have it. It's really eating its way in that direction right, uh, right at the, high, the old highway. And uh, most of the gas 
seems to be coming from this back area here. All right, it's time to go get a look at the Salton Sea. There it is, the final destination, it appears, of the mud geyser would be the Salton Sea. And uh, this is a place, of course, that back in the 60s and the 70s was a very uh, popular place for people from Los Angeles to drive out and do a lot of recreation out here. Uh, they'd see a Sinatra show. They would, uh, you know, do some boating, water skiing, fishing. And since that time, things have really gone downhill. For one thing, uh, the sea is uh, really receding faster than my hairline, you might say. If you look back there, you might see kind of a kind of a high area. That's the old shore of the Salton Sea back in its heyday. They would have had marinas up there and hotels and everything. Since that time, things have really retreated and it's become a very toxic place. That's probably what it's known for now because of all of the agricultural runoff that happens down into this, this basin. It's the low point well below sea level and all of that irrigation water that uh, runs down into here carries pesticides and fertilizers from the fields uh, into the sea and there's no real exit. So once water comes in here, the only way it's ever gonna leave is through evaporation. I finally made it to the new campground here at the Salton Sea. I uh, decided to pay for a spot and it turns out to be a pretty nice place to stay, I think. I do wanna tell you how I got out of the mud from earlier today. The whole time that I was stuck there, only two trucks came along that road that you saw. Both of them apparently were driven by uh, Mexican-American, probably agricultural workers. And both of them stopped and spent a bunch of time trying to help me out of that mud. Uh, the first person actually tried to use jumper cables to tow me out and the jumper cables ended up breaking. And then many hours later, a second person only had some fairly light duty uh, ratchet straps. So they took about five of them and kind of wound them together to create a custom uh, stronger ratchet strap, which was enough to pull the taco out of that kind of uh, slippery angled situation. Uh, these were not the kind of people that you put in front of a camera. They were just good, decent people going about their everyday lives. And when I offered them cash for their help, uh, they said, we're not here for cash. We're here to help you out of the mud. So from the struggles of earlier today, perhaps comes a little bit of a story of hope. Uh, you know, hope for us, perhaps hope for our country, maybe even hope for that mud geyser that it might finally reach its destination. Well, it is getting kind of windy out here and chilly, so I'm going to shut down the camera and say, uh, until next time, goodbye.